All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to I Am Katowice. Now, unfortunately, our overlay is a little bit bare and empty. Um, I did actually put a request for any any um, overlay stuff we need, but unfortunately, the assets we were given weren't uh, <laughs> usable, I suppose. So I'm, I'm hoping that at some point, someone from I Am is going to see the broadcast and be like, Wait a minute! They should be using our logo! So I can be like, yes! And just like I asked an hour ago, you should send it to us so that we can use your logo. So until then, we're just going to go with the bare bones of what is Base Trade TV and mess with it as the day goes on. Again, lots of matches coming up today, and we will be covering a significant amount of them. I believe seven best of fives uh, in total. Uh, regardless, spawning here on the top right side of Ruins of Cirrus, we've got the Red Terran player, CM Storm's Pulse. In the top left as the blue Zerg player, he is Lambo. Invasion esports. In the question mark. All right, so Lambo and Polt are not two players that often will get the opportunity to play on the same server, no latency, all that discrepancy aside. And I do want to say, I actually believe in my in my bones, if you will. Actually, let me flip the names on the overlay. Uh, I actually think Lambo could take this series. I don't know that I'm bold enough to say that he would. Because I think Pult's still my favorite when it comes to live events. But Lambo is looking really good lately. And TVZ especially, I'm waiting to see what he can do versus Pult's. Um, if it was a PVZ, then I would definitely say Lambo takes this. Uh, against, like, anyone actually available at the tournament, I would say he took it at some... Like, you know, not like a 3-0, but still would take it. But uh, against Pult, as you said, live events. Pult is really different than online events. And uh, ZVT is um, the tiniest bit favorable uh, to Terran. Uh, of course, overall, it, it's it's very different, right? Because yeah. the Ultra is still... Like, if it goes a late game, it's probably skewed more, but you know we don't, we don't have those stats. But uh, certainly the early game is very interesting. Clash, it feels a lot like Heart of the Swarm lately with a lot more people going into Needle Lane Bling. Well, and Korea is still exclusively using it. See, that's this is another big part of why I think Lambo's got a good shot in the series. Um, it's because he really he's he's not someone who's been stuck on one build. There's been a lot of good Zerg players who've been stuck on Roach, Ravager, and Fest, or stuck on Ling Bling Muta, and they just don't get past layer, and they never have that smooth transition to Hive. You know, you're always getting pushed as the Ultra's Caverns coming down. Like that's what we cast a lot of. Not with Lambo though, and that's that for me is the one reason I'm feeling like he's got a good chance to get pulled because he actually knows how to take the game to that next level. Now for pulled a bit of a I'd say funky opening, nothing too weird or too insane, but that stim comes down rather quick. And with uh, no Reapers for scouting whatsoever, he is going to be at the mercy of guessing about Lambo. Yeah, that's a big uh, you know, takeaway from doing the CC first, but he does have that accelerated economy, so you know it's, it's worth it for him. Uh, what Paul is doing is actually, um, it just, it's going to be a little bit sooner of an attack. It's like not full on two base. But kind of like an addition, like in the, like a midway, I guess you could say, because it's two racks, not three, and you know, uh, actually bothering to get Hellions, but it is going to be uh, Metavax and Stim at the very least with Combat Shields, of course, afterwards. And Lambo would like to see this with an Overlord. Uh, Polt actually didn't do like any intention of hiding it, which is a little odd. Usually, like we saw it on Dusk Towers, for instance, it would be like way back in the back, which sometimes. Uh, Players do this build for, but it's actually going to be that Viking to start things off. That infamous Pult Viking. Well, <laughs> infamous or not, one of the things I do enjoy about it is things like Nidus Worms and Drop Overlords have become a lot more common nowadays than they ever used to be in the past for StarCraft 2. And while a Viking is not the most significantly dangerous unit in the game, it will clean up the Overlords chilling around the bases like this one here. And uh, of course, above all, it's prevent a little bit more scouting. Lambo, of course, not going for fast overlord speed. It means he's not going to get that scout at this rate, even if he decides to make that into an overseer with the layer finishing. The Viking should still be able to deal with it. But mm. regardless of what either player has seen currently, and that's right, we can actually check without fear. Yeah, Pulse not even seen a building. He's, he's seen what? the edge of creep, and that's it. Dang. Okay, he bothers to scan. Good move. Like, that is really dangerous, because he didn't see the third base for a long time. Yeah. But all right, sees the lair, is unable to see what tech is coming from that lair, and didn't even see the Roach Warren, I don't believe, which is uh, just finished up in the natural. 
So he might be a little surprised to see roaches after seeing nothing but uh, actually queens and like a very small amount of wings defending against his hellions. But this is going into that third CC, so it's, it's like it's, it's like a two base sort of um, with only two racks, but uh, very Ooh. quickly going into a double drop combined with hellions. It's yeah. not going to work out as well as if it was versus Ling Bling, but the power of the Marines and the Medivacs should still be useful here against the Roach style. Yeah, the one of the problems Roaches are going to really struggle with here are responding from base to base, and that's the nice thing for Polt. He can really abuse dropping in the main, running to the third, having the Roaches have to run all the way around. Uh, it's going to be difficult. I want to give some thank you to Flying Sheepman for the three-month resub as well. Sorry, Twitch Alerts is still not making noises, at least for me. Did you hear the stim when he hit it? I forgot to open the other box, so. Nice. Well. So we, one of us failed and the other one failed, but in a completely different manner. <laughs> All right. So uh, pushing here with the Marines. Of course, a little bit scary when the Roaches are small in numbers, but when there's plenty, it's always nice. And there we go. Just picking up and going to the high ground uh, is the intention here. But leaving Roaches up there, Lambo is going to spook them away. This is really nice defense from Lambo. Absolutely. Like perfectly timed Roaches. The Ling is covering the natural. Pult, you know, is this really should have been scary if he was just on... Muta Baneling, especially if he had hit right before like the Muta's were out, which he scanned the layer and he might have thought that would have been the case, but nope, the Roaches really solidify this uh, defense, and Polt, you know, like I said, it's not like this, this super two-base all-in like you might see on Lairlac Crest from a Terran versus Zerg, but it was something that was not like a fast 3cc, right? So he is actually, um, he's gonna have to recover a little bit from this, that, you know, recovery includes carrying up creep, you know, these drops, continuing to keep Lambo at home, and certainly I don't think Polt's out of the game, but he does take a supply dip as Lambo is starting to uh, really get up there in supply with his roaches. And uh, his upgrades right, are a but, little lopsided, but. That is a bit of an asterisk, though, because when it comes to supply and roaches and ravagers, we all know the tale of inflation. So it's. I, I like the drone count for Lambo for sure. And with the fourth base coming down, mwah, even better. But the thing is, he really doesn't have a very effective army. Like, it's large and it's brute force, but, you know, there's no ravagers, so there's not going to be corrosive biles. There's no infestors to hold anything in place. The Roach number is good, don't get me wrong, but it is Ravagers and everything else that makes this an amazing army. Yeah. yeah. Well, Lambo, you know, he might have been... I don't know, like, maybe in the beginning of this game was thinking, like, a Roach max out, but as the game goes on, uh, he's not, you know, really... He's not maxing out, he's actually supply blocked right now. <laughs> uh, and he's getting a fourth base, and he's been uh -huh. defending against the, the drops, so that's giving Paul a lot of time to solidify his defense. There's the Ravagers we expected to see, and he will have 1-1 one, one with this push, but like I said, it was, it was lopsided, so not exactly the cleanest. Uh, quick shout-out, by the way, Mr. Boris Makarov is going to be hosting a giveaway in our Discord server for subscribers, if you guys want to check that out. If you, of course, need a link to our Discord server, you can probably poke around, someone will give you an answer uh, with a bit of a link. But, okay, uh, that aside, we do have an attack on the front lines over here, and this army is going to be fighting some tanks to defend, so it won't be too bad. Uh, I do want to point that Lambo's fourth actually does get up and running while this goes on. Pult did have the opportunity to drop, but he was a lot more focused here on the defense, as that is a significant amount of Ravagers coming in. Now, interestingly enough, Lambo is not using his Ravagers to try and zone and move around the tanks. He's trying to use it to hit the bio, and I can't say I'm entirely down with that idea. Just trading yeah. them out in the front lines like that was not going to be worth killing what is a handful of Marines at best. I mean, one Corrosive Bile can only hit about five units at most. Uh, Polt has been doing a pretty decent job about dodging on all fronts. His tanks dodged uh, away from the manual attacks, and his marines still trying to dodge away from those corrosive biles. Up to four tanks now, and still a lot of medevacs available Whoa. to uh, take them around, but actually one goes down. For the Lambo, going down too, though. For Lambo, this is kind of all in, though. Like, he really can't afford to lose too much. If he does, there's nothing to fall back on. Now, he does keep the supply count somewhat even. It takes decent trades through this attack, but... I don't know. Your army supply mm -hmm. shouldn't be even to that of your Terran opponent. You want it to be really ahead when you're going for a style like this. Because keep in mind, once again, he's not flooding links behind this. He's not going for Infestors as round two. It is Roach and Ravager in its most brutal form. Yeah. I think Paul did, like, uh, you know, a couple of things really well there. Like, that one drop was, you know, it was just the one drop. He didn't actually go forward with his army and get caught out of position. He was prepping a very good defense. So that was a good read on the situation. And then, of course, dodging all of the shots and keeping most of his tanks alive was also really good. I think Lambo might have messed up a little bit with the, like, the timing on the attack. Because, you know, he had a supply block that one time and his carapace seemed a little bit later. But uh, I think just in general, Paul was going to be prepared for something like that. And he did a really nice job. And, you know, also to note, just he went with pure marine. 
He had like one Marauder, I think, at the very beginning of the fights. Yeah. Actually, so that's kind of interesting. I remember us discussing this composition a little while back, saying like it seems silly, but as it turned out, like as long as you could tear through the roaches, you wouldn't necessarily need Marauders because Marines would deal with the Ravagers really efficiently. Yeah. So I think that's a big part where like we're tanks and now Liberators can it make was... that difference. Yeah, it was something that was being experimented with at Heart of the Swarm too. A couple players like Daishi, I remember seeing uh, going for pure Marine, but it was just like the Marauders like could actually tank so much that you know the medevac healing and the lack of burst damage would usually really help. And of course, you know they're, the fact that they counter the roaches, but the uh, the mass Marine covered by tanks is working out really well by Pulse. Oh gosh, that's a lot of tanks, and that's a lot of damage Lambo's taken. Eats it all to the face. Again, the supply not too bad. But actually, the funny point here is the supply for Pult is not exactly getting better. With so much of this being in Medivax, when those fungal growths finally come out, he lands like one fungal on those clumped up Medivax, lands three Corrosive Biles afterwards, Pult's gonna lose like 30 supply in air. <laughs> that is certainly true, but he's also got this really high tank count. As long as he's careful with that, then it should always be scary for Lambo to push in. Yeah. His upgrades have also finished. Lambo's just a bit further behind in the plus two carapace again. And uh, Pult is going to be careful pushing in here, going to clear up creep first. He is bothering to actually dis, like, uh, unsiege and siege, which is a little interesting. Yeah, instead of shuffling with the medevacs, he wanted them with the bio, I guess, as the priority. This gives him <laughs> way to get in here. Fungal growths come down, but most of the Ravagers burn their corrosive bio. Still going to try and land that. Oh, the clump on medevacs, oh, and Pult damn. loses everything on the front lines. Saves the one tank. Now, he, like, this is actually a point where if he had a couple of tech labs, he could actually probably go pure Marauder, uh, or sorry, pure Bio, but he is, he bothered to get that second factory. He's still producing Medivacs, too, so he's not, like, you know, exactly uh, dead in the water with those, but he's not terrible after that. That was a really good fungal. That helped, but I think Pult's still in a grand position in this game, especially because Lambo uh, has not made it up to Hive yet, which is usually the timer. Without that timer, Roach Ravager, even with Infestors, does start to fall off. Well, I do like that we finally made it to this next step, though, because if, if Lambo had been stuck in playing just pure Roach, even with Ravagers for too long, this game would not have gone well for him, but... Uh, the downside to this is while it can be incredibly effective in some select scenarios, it's still not good at splitting its own defenses against multi-pronged pushes, which is happening right now. So has to kind of cancel and give up this northern base while he tries to secure the southern one. Double drops into the main. There's nothing here to defend currently. And this is why we see some players actually preferring, uh, not mutilists, but corruptors to go in with this. They're so good at just picking off those medevacs and taking hits. But it's 3-3 finish here for Pult. Not quite done yet. It means these roaches can still fight on somewhat even footing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Pult's intentionally trying to get his aid. Okay, there it goes. Fix up. So, focus in the middle of the map where he has been clearing up creep, so his tanks are just off the edge of it. Hmm. Of course, the question really comes down to Lambo how he wants to use those fungals, because up to this point, you know, it's... He got one great hit on those medevacs. Fantastic. He may try and emulate that again. He may try and just use the fungal growth damage as a bit of an area of effect spread. He may try and keep it so the medevacs can't pick up the tanks, but one thing's for certain, he doesn't have a lot of them, so he's got to be very careful with how he chooses to use these units. Yeah, and uh, the tanks will be trying to focus right on those infestors as well. Back to what they were really used for, Wings of Liberty, before, of course, they died in Heart of the Swarm. And right. now we're back with a vengeance. This is like straight up Wings oh, of Liberty A's. Dude. Unfortunately, with all of them on the front lines, loses everything. With those infestors going down, that may just be his hopes going up in flame. He was, of course, distracted. He wasn't just AFK. There's a drop going on towards the south while this was going on. And without those infestors to keep the army from advancing, Pult's starting to gain more ground, sieging up the tanks, moving up the Liberators, leapfrogging every little bit forward. Of course, the battles come ah. down to catch some of this, but not enough of this. <laughs> yeah. That last second almost dodge worked out. Uh, that is some of the last infestors. Two more about to pop, but I think Lambo is feeling oh gosh. the uh, chances in this game are slipping away. He has nothing that he's really looking forward to. He's got the like the best upgrades he can actually get. He hasn't started Hive. Uh, there's no Spire. Maybe you can start taking out the uh, you know, corruptors. If there was less bio, actually pushing top of the tanks would probably work because you get into the dead zone of them. But not able to do that. Still bleeding out to the Liberator. GG. <laughs> But even with that defeat, Lambo almost took that fight. Uh, not that he would have had the macro behind it, but now maybe you guys understand why I'm hyping this kid up. 